What's going on everybody? My name is Phantomatic and today I'm going to be showing you how to build Wuthering Waves' newest 5 star spectral supporter, the Shorekeeper. This mysterious divine waifu that governs the essence of aloofness has awakened a response to your call to have her on your account. With her on your team, it'll finally be time to put your arena on a well-deserved vacation. As always, here are the materials you'll need to ascend and max your skills for the Shorekeeper. Anyways, make sure to subscribe to the channel and let's get to building. Your silence. Civilization will endure on this shore. And this shore is a testament to my existence. The Shorekeeper's primary goal on the team is providing heals and buffing her team's damage. However, you really want to focus on her healing. So let's get right into what her Forte Circuit does. So her Forte Circuit allows her to use Collapsed Cores. These cores are built into her Forte Circuit and can be transformed into a Flare Star Butterfly after 6 seconds. These butterflies will then auto-track and attack the nearest target and if you have 5 of these butterflies, then the next core generated will immediately turn into a butterfly without having to wait the 6 seconds. These collapsed cores also have two more variants. There's the second variant which involves using the shorekeeper's heavy attack where the 5 cores will pull and group enemies together dealing damage and will immediately transform the 5 cores into butterflies. And there's the final variant which involves using her midair attack which will immediately turn the 5 collapsed cores into butterflies. You can collect these collapsed cores by attacking enemies with your basic attack, midair attack and heavy attack. The shorekeeper is also able to enter the unbound state when she uses her heavy attack and not only is it able to automatically pick up plant collectibles but will also generate a segment of deductive data which can form a collapsed core every second. Her resonance skill will restore all allies HP and summon 5 dim star butterflies to attack the target. And her resonance liberation generates outer stellarum for 30 seconds and what this does is restore HP for every single ally that's within its effective range every 3 seconds. However, if an ally uses their intro skill within the outer stellar realm, then it'll evolve into the inner stellar realm. And what this does is give every ally a bonus crit rate of 0.01%, which can go up to a max of 12.5% for every 0.2% of the shortkeeper's energy regen. But wait, this isn't its final form, because when you use an ally's intro skill inside of the inner stellar realm, then it'll evolve into the supernatural stellar realm. And what this effectively does is change the buff from a 12.5%. 5% crit rate to 25% crit damage and shorekeeper's intro skill will change into the intro skill discernment when she uses it inside of the supernatural stellar realm and what this does is end the current stellar realm heals every ally's hp and guarantees crit on the intro skill which deals resonance liberation damage and lastly her passes will allow one ally to tank a fatal blow and restore 50 percent of their hp however shorekeeper will also have to lose the same amount of hp as well and shorekeeper's energy regen will also increase by 10 percent when an ally is in range of her stellar realm and this 10 percent increase is also active for rover if they're under Team. Your silence, civilization will endure on this shore. And this shore is a testament to my existence. If you're wondering which of her skills you should level up, then if you're focusing on building a damage focused shorekeeper, you should level up intro skill, resonance skill, ultimate, basic attack, and forte circuit in that order. But if you're building a healing focused build, then I'd recommend Resonance Skill, Resonance Liberation, Intro Skill, Basic Attack, and Forte Circuit in that order. Your silence, civilization will endure on this shore. And this shore is a testament to my existence. Shorekeeper's best in slot weapon is going to be her signature 5 star weapon, Stellar Symphony. With attack and energy regen as its main stats, it's going to increase her HP by 12%, restore 8 concerto energy when you use her ultimate, and increase nearby allies' attack by 14% for 30 seconds when you use a skill that heals. However, you can use her second best option, the 4 star rectifier variation, which will restore her concerto energy by 16% when you use her skill. However, this can only be triggered once every 20 seconds. 
There's also her third option, the 4-star rectifier number 25, which will restore her HP if her health is below 60%, or increase her attack by 24% for 10 seconds if her HP is above 60% when you use her skill. However, these effects can only trigger once every 20 seconds. There's also the 4-star rectifier Fusion Accretion, which will grant Shorekeeper 6 resonance energy and increase her attack by 15% for 16 seconds when she uses her skill. However, this effect can only be triggered once every 20 seconds. And for the final 4-star option, it's the 4-star Rectifier Comet Flare, which will increase her healing bonus by 3% for 8 seconds, which can be stacked 3 times to a max of 9%, every time you use her basic attack or heavy attack, and this effect can be triggered every 0.6 seconds. And lastly, there's the 3-star weapon, Rectifier Voyager, which will increase her resonance energy by 12 when she uses her skill. Through silence, civilization will endure on this shore. This jewel is a testament to my existence. The Shorekeeper's best Echo Set is going to be the 5 Cent Rejuvenating Glow, which will increase her healing by 10% and grant her entire team a 15% attack increase for 30 seconds when she's healing allies. However, you can also use the 2 Cent Rejuvenating Glow and 2 Cent Moonlit Clouds, which will increase her healing by 10% and increase her energy regen by 10%. As for her best 4 cost Echoes, these are going to be the 4 cost Bellborn and the 4 cost Fallacy of No Return. And if you're aiming to use the 5 piece rejuvenating glow set, then I'd recommend using Bellborn as your 4 cost since it will grant a 50% damage reduction shield and a 10% damage increase to the character on field. However, these buffs will only last until you get hit 3 times. And if you're aiming to use the hybrid set, then I'd recommend going for Fallacy of No Return, which will give Shorekeeper a 10% energy regen boost and give all her allies a 10% bonus attack boost for 20 seconds. As for your main stats on your relics, you'd want a combination of crit damage and healing bonus or crit damage and HP on your 4 cost. Both of your 3 costs should have energy regen and both 1 cost should have HP on them. As for your substats, if you're looking to build a DPS shorekeeper, then I'd recommend going for energy regen, crit damage or ultimate damage, HP% percent and flat HP. However, if you're building a healing focus build, then I'd recommend energy regen, HP% percent and flat HP. Through silence, civilization will endure on this shore. And this shore is a testament to my existence. With the Shorekeeper being an amazing supporter, she literally works on most if not all teams. However, if you're still wondering, then the lineup can be DPS, Shorekeeper, then Sub-DPS. Through silence, civilization will endure on this shore. And this shore is a testament to my existence. If you're wondering whether or not if the Shorekeeper is free to play, then I'm happy to tell you that she is. Most of her dupes realistically only up the numbers of some of her kit, but for the sake of those curious, let's go through them one by one. Her first node is going to increase the effective range and buffs from her ultimate by 150%, and her enhanced intro skill will no longer remove her ultimate. Now I can see why this would sound rather helpful, but if we do sit down and think about it, this just sounds like something you want for luxury. Sure, it may prove useful, but if you manage your way around her ultimate, then honestly you'll be fine. Her second node is going to increase everyone's attack in the Outer Stellar Realm by 40%. Her third node is going to grant Shorekeeper 20 Concerto energy whenever she uses her ultimate. However, this effect only happens once every 25 seconds. Her fourth node is going to increase her additional healing bonus by 70% when you use her skill. Her fifth node is going to increase the pulling range of her third string in her basic attack and elation by 30%. And and lastly, her 6th node is going to increase the damage of her enhanced intro skill and will increase her crit damage by 500%. So yeah, if you're still looking to pull dupes, then I'd honestly just recommend going for a first node, since it's the most helpful out of the bunch. But for free-to-play players, you don't have to pull any dupes whatsoever. And that's gonna be it for this build guide. I'm glad to be back making build guides for Wuthering Waves. Anyways, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next Wuthering Waves video. Signing off.